Okay, so dito na tayo sa cybercrime in the Philippines. Ayan. Okay, cybercrime or computer crime? Same lang sila. Siyempre, pag sinabing cyber, it's related to your computer and you won't be able to commit a cybercrime without a certain device or a certain computer. Okay, so... Uh, computer crime is any crime accomplished through special knowledge of computer technology. Any crime or computer is used as a tool or as a target incidental to the commission of a crime. Uh, anyway, you have a separate subject for cybercrime investigation. So parang backgrounder lang tong i-discuss natin as part of uh, organized crime. And ayun. It is also known as cybercrime, any illegal act in which knowledge of computer technology is used to commit the offense. Ah, balikan natin tong ikalawa. Sabi, any crime where computer is used as a tool or as a target incidental to the commission of a crime. So when we say that computer was used as a tool, ibig sabihin yung computer ay ginamit lang para makumit ang cybercrime. Pag sinabi naman computer as a target, yung mismong computer ang target ng krimen. Kuha nyo, pag sinabing tool, naging daan lang siya. Ito lang yung naging paraan para maisagawa yung krimen. Pero pag sinabing target, yung computer mismo ang gustong uh, magawa ng krimen, sabihin na natin. Yung mga nilalaman ng computer ang gustong makuha. Okay? Okay, yun yan. So, it is any illegal act in which knowledge of computer technology is used to commit the offense. And then, all illegal activities that are committed by or with the aid of computer or information technology it, or in which the computers are the target of the criminal enterprise. Katulad nga nung uh, pagkaka-explain natin dun sa computer used as a tool or as a target. Okay. Eto, siguro, yung iba sa inyo narinig na, baka yung iba hindi pa dahil medyo old case na ito. Pero early 2000, kapapanganak nyo lang. So, by far, the most popular incidence of cybercrime in the Philippines is the I love you virus or the love bug. The suspect in the case is a 23-year-old student from a popular computer university in the Philippines. Drafted the virus with the vision of creating a program that is capable of stealing passwords in computers ultimately to have access to free uh, to have free access to the internet so yun uh so estudyante gumawa siya ng isang virus para maka-access siya ng internet na libre dati kasi siguro hindi niya na inabutan sa mga bahay-bahay noon, hindi pa talaga uso ang wifi. Alam nyo, niloloadan yung uh, computer kung hindi ka, ano to, kung wala ka talaga ang direct access doon sa internet provider, internet service provider mo. Uh, USB pong broadband, yan, medyo ano na yan, siguro around 2010, mga ganun na yung panahon na yan, ha? at least on my part. Doon ko lang siya na-experience. Or siguro kung hindi 2010, uh, around 2008, 2009. Pero noon nga, naalala ko kasi no elementary ako, nasa abroad ang papa ko. So, si mama, bumibili siya ng, as in, alam niyo, parang prepaid card talaga. Ganun, niloloadan yung, nakalimutan ko na yung tawag sa ano na yun. Basta niloloadan mo yung computer para maka-access ka sa internet. Tapos sobrang saglit lang siya. Although, uh, mas mababa kasi um, ano to? <laughs> mas mababa pa yung mga files noon. Tsaka yung mga, wala pa kasi masyadong graphics noon. Eh di ba, pag mag-graphics ang isang uh, sabi na natin game, kailangan mas malaki yung RAM mo. Kaya nga, di ba, yung mga gaming laptop, mas malalaki yung RAM nila, mas mabibilis yung processor nila. Hindi katulad itong laptop ko, hindi naman siya pang gaming. So, tamang pang 
pang PowerPoint lang siya, pang Microsoft Word, pero kapag yung may mga games na siya, dahil mabibigat yung graphics niya, hindi niya kakayanin. Kumbaga, magiging mabagal siya. Eh, nung panahon nga na yun, dati, uh, hindi pa naman masyadong mag-graphics ang mga bagay-bagay sa internet. So, kaya pa na niloloadan lang. Kumbaga, tamang matawagan lang namin si Papa ko noon. Ganon. Kaya, uh, eto, estudyante ito, gumawa ng virus. Kasi nga, medyo mahal pa nga noon. Hindi katulad ngayon, uh, 1,500 unlimited wifi na. Uh, limited access to the internet na pwede pa mag-connect ang iba-ibang device. E noon, siguro 100 pesos. E malaking halaga pa yun noon. 100 pesos mo, saglit lang natawag. Ayan. So, mahal pa siya noon. Kaya, natitempt ang taong gumawa ng crime. Ayan. During the height of the love bug incident, Reuters have reported the Philippines has yet to arrest the suspect creator of the love bug computer virus because it lacks laws that deal with computer crime. A senior police officer said the fact of the matter is that there are no laws relating to cybercrime in the Philippines. The National Bureau of Investigation is finding it difficult to legally arrest the suspect behind the love bug computer virus. Kasi nga, um, anti-cybercrime law was only enacted in 2012. That is Republic Act 10175. Itong incident na to, if I'm not mistaken, 2003? So, wala pa talagang batas. O paano mo arrestohin kung wala na mga nangyari? Diba? There is no crime if there is no law punishing it. Eh dahil walang batas during that time, hindi mo siya pwedeng maaresto. Pero alam natin uh, na may nagawa talaga siyang hindi tama. Hindi lang natin ito matawag na crime kasi nga walang batas na nagsasabing crime yun. Kaya yan ang sabi nila, nahirapan daw ang NBI. Hindi naman talaga siya nakulong. So as such, the need for countries to legislate cyber laws related to cybercrime arises on an urgent priority basis because, you know, cyberspace is a new venue for criminals to commit crimes. Ayun. At dahil isa siyang bagong lugar kung saan pwedeng gumawa ng krimen, kailangan mo rin ng mga bagong batas o kailangan mo ng mga batas na akma para parusahan yung mga ganong gawain. Due to the incident, the Philippines have seen the necessity for the passage of a law to penalize cybercrimes. Thus, the enactment of Republic Act 8792, otherwise known as the Electronic Commerce Act. Pero hindi pa niyan sakop yung RA-10175. Because RA-10175 specifically uh, points to cybercrime. Okay? Ayan, RA-8792 was legislated because of the I Love You virus. So this act shall be known and cited as the Electronic Commerce Act. Okay. Common types of cybercrime already handled by the NBI. So we have hacking and cracking. Hacking uh, is when you have illegal access to another person's personal account. Cracking is a higher form of hacking. Uh, ito yung sabi na natin, you tried to crack the system of the military. Yung mga ganun na, yung hacking, sabihin na natin yung mga low, mga low key lang. Uh, hinak mo yung account ng jowa mong tingin mo na chichik. Yun. Hacking. Okay. Pero yun nga, basically, parehas lang sila ng ginagawa. The only difference is that cracking is a higher form in order to impede the system. Para hindi magamit yung system or hindi kayo magkaroon ng access doon sa system. Okay, malicious email sending, internet pornography, no need to explain, kabisado nyo na yan. Launching of harmful computer viruses. Um, Computer virus kasi, it deletes, it damages the files in your computers. Okay. 
distributed denial of service attacks or yung DOS DOS. Pag sinabi kasi denial of service, ibig sabihin yung servisyong dapat nakukuha mo na de-deny sa iyo. So hindi mo nakukuha. Paano? Dahil parang nagbo-bombard ng mga email. So hindi mo na magamit dahil tuloy-tuloy lang siyang nakaka-receive ng email. Ah, uh, ganun. I- para siyang alam niyo yung sabay-sabay kayong gumamit ng Uh, isang internet, uh, isang website. Tapos sa sobrang dami ng users, hindi siya makapag-function. Something like that. Okay, that's DOS. And then we have web pa- website defacement. Uh, eto naman, sabihin natin, website ng Department of Health. Yun, syempre sa government yun, di ba? Ang mga in-charge doon, yung mga nagtatrabaho sa DOH, government. Tapos, Sabihin na natin, nagkaroon ka ng illegal access doon, tapos nag-upload ka ng porn. So, that's called uh, web page, website defacement. Okay. And then, uh, acquiring credit card information from an e-commerce website. Uh, well, basically, yun na yun. Nakakuha ka ng information from a credit card sa isang e-commerce website. And then, internet shopping using fraudulently acquired credit cards. Uh, wire transfer of funds from a fraudulently acquired credit card. And then, online auction fraud. Okay. What are common methods and standard terms used to describe uh, cybercrime? So, we have first is hacking. This is the act of illegally accessing the computer system or network of an individual, group, or business enterprise without the consent or approval of the owner of the system. And then cracking is a higher form of hacking in which the unauthorized access culminates with the process of defeating the security system for the purpose of acquiring money or information and or availing of free services. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, eto yung higher form ng hacking but basically hacking din siya and ayun ang makukuha mo is and the purpose for doing this is acquiring money or information kato ng example natin kanina uh, hinak mo yung website ng military so nakakuha ka ng information ayan and or availing of free services Malicious sending of emails naman. The sending of malicious and defamatory electronic mails for the purpose of exhort... extorting money or threatening prospective victims. Oo nga eh. Pinag-move. Ayun. Okay, so yun, yun yung malicious sending of emails. Uh, ang dating, para kang bina-blackmail, para makakuha ng pera, para takutin ang isang biktima. And then, internet pornography, the trafficking, distribution, posting, and dissemination of, of, of obscene material, including children's nude pictures, indecent exposure, child sex, slavery, posted into the internet. Live streaming videos aired through the internet. And then, a computer virus is a computer program that can copy itself and infect a computer without permission or knowledge of the user. Uh, a virus, yun na nga, nabangit ko na rin to pala kanina, can delete, can alter a certain file or many files. Depende kasi sa uri ng virus yan. So, launching of harmful computer virus, worm. Uh, it spreads itself to other computers without needing to be transferred as part of a port host. Course. 
Nabasa ko kasi tong Trojan horse. Okay, a Trojan horse is also a virus. A worm is also a virus. But a worm, sabi nga dyan, it can copy it. A worm can copy itself. Uh, paano ba ito? Ang isang worm, pag nasa computer mo na siya, magre-replicate siya. For example, etong PowerPoint presentation na to, sabihin nating worm siya. So, at sabihin nating meron siyang um, 5 MB. 5 MB yung size niya. So, paulit-ulit siyang malalagay doon sa computer mo. O syempre, 5 MB siya. Uh, paulit-ulit din na, na dadagdagan o na nababawasan yung space mo ng 5 MB. As in, paulit-ulit siyang magsisave hanggang sa maubos yung memory mo. So, hindi mo na magagamit ng computer. You have to uh, reformat. Okay? Trojan horse is a file that appears harmless until executed. Trojan horses do not insert their code into other computer files. And then we have logic bomb. It is a set of instructions secretly inserted into a program that is designed to execute if a particular program is satisfied. The bomb lies dormant until a particular date is reached or command entered. So, dahil nga bomba siya, so may pasabog siya. At yung pasabog niya ay virus. Ang kaibahan lang is that ang logic bomb, pwede siyang may schedule kung kailan siya sasabog or kapag meron ng command. Pag sinabi command, uh, nag, may pinindot ka na, uh, may in-enter ka na na password or kung ano man. Yun. Identity theft. Defined as the criminal act of assuming person's name, address, social security number, and the date of birth in order to commit fraud. Uh, yari, ako. Ako si Leslie. Tapos may isa sa inyo, nakuha yung information ko, inassume nyo, uh, kayo na si Leslie. Yeah, that's identity theft. Uh, sa cybercrime lang, ginagamit mo siya through online transactions. Okay, and then phishing. Sending fraudulent emails or website pop-ups to get victims to divulge sensitive financial information such as credit card numbers or social security numbers. Pwedeng may tatawag sa inyo. Hello po, ito po ay sa BDO. Uh, dahil may credit card po kayo, uh, may gusto lang po namin i-check yung ganito-ganyan. Kasi medyo may problem po sa account ninyo. Pwede pong pakibigay ang inyong bank account number at password. Kung naman si Tanga, binigay mo. Ayun na. Uh, biktima ka ng voice phishing. Ayan. Okay. And then distributed denial of service attacks, DDoS attacks, created by employing multiple computers controlled by a single master computer server to target a particular server by bombarding it with thousands of packets of data in an attempt to overwhelm the server and cause it to crash. Yun, yung sabi nga natin kanina, na sobrang daming emails mong makukuha and then sa sobrang dami, hindi mo na siya ma-access. Kasi parang wala na siyang ibang ginawa kundi tumanggap ng emails. Ayan. Web face, website defacement. Bakit ba ako web face ng web face? <laughs> website defacement is the unauthorized modification of a website. Ayun na nga. Katulad ng example natin kanina, uh, yung uh, website ng DOH, in-uploadan mo ng porn. Sex education, sabi niyo. Mali ha. Bawal yun. And then acquiring credit card information from a website that offers e-services. So when you shop online, the most convenient way to pay for the items you order is through your credit card. When you pay through your credit card, you need to disclose information such as your complete name, postal address, zip code, state, phone number, credit card account number, its expiration date, and its security code or PIN. Upon entering the above-mentioned information, it will be verified real-time by the site merchant. 
it usually takes a minute to verify whether the credit card is valid or invalid. If valid, the information you entered will be stored in the website's database server. Ayun, tapos dun sa server na yon kinuha mo yung mga credit card information. Edi, wala na, may access na sila dun sa credit card mo. Hackers look for the file containing the credit card information of all the customers who, who bought it, who bought from a certain e-commerce site, Shopee, Lazada. Upon acquisition thereof, it will be decrypted to make it readable and all the information of the transactions will be made available. Hackers prefer Visa, American Express, and MasterCard will, when filtering credit card information. It is because Visa and MasterCard are widely accepted by almost all internet shopping sites. American Express, on the other hand, has no credit limit. Credit card numbers of American Express start with the number 3. MasterCard credit cards start with the number 5. While Visa credit cards start with number 4. American Express credit cards have 15 digits account number while Visa and MasterCard credit cards contain 16. So, far, uh, additional information lang ito. Uh, same pa rin. Internet shopping using fraudulently acquired credit cards. Hackers, upon acquiring the desired credit card information, now conducts window shopping, hopping from one shop site to another. Looking for cell phones, gadgets, apparels, computer, peripherals, softwares, and others. When he finds what he wants to buy, he then adds his desired items to the shopping cart and checks out. Check out. He will then supply the credit card information of the fraudulently acquired credit card, such as the complete name of the cardholder and other uh, information. Tapos, papadala na ang ilalagay na shipping address ay yung, syempre, address nung... Uh, hacker na yun. When a hacker knows your complete credit card information, he can extract cash from the acquired credit or debit card online. Online auction fraud. First, the fraudster should sign up for an account at an online auction site such as eBay, Yahoo Auctions, or Ubid. Familiar kayo sa term na auction? Uh, eto yung magsasabi ka, magbibid ka, sasabihin mo kung magkano mo gustong bayaran ang isang item and then the highest bidder will, then the item will be sold to the highest bidder. Parang yung mga ginagawa sa palengke, hindi pa palengke, yung pagkahuli ng mga, especially mga isda, pagkahuli ng mga isda, nakalimutan ko yung term, pero yung mga batsa, uh, bulong. Tama ba? Bulong. Parang bulong nga ang term. As in, ibubulong mo dun sa tindera kung magkano mo gusto bilhin, bilhin yung item niya. Yung mga isda dun sa batya. Tapos kung sino may, may sino yung may pinakamataas na bulong, sa kanya ibibenta. Ayan. Okay. So, the fraudster falsifies all information that he enters on the sign-up page. Siyempre, Hindi niya ibibigay yung tunay niyang identity. The only true information is his email address for he will be contacted by interested bidders by means of email. He will be asked to provide a credit card. This is where he will need the fraudulently acquired credit card. When all of the required fields are signed up, his application will be approved and he will be a registered member of the said auction site. He is now then allowed to bid and auction any item. A fraudster will auction expensive items such as laptops, cell phones, PDAs, uh, desktop computers, camcorders, and hard-to-find memorabilia. He will then sell it to a lower price for legitimate bidders to bid immediately. An online fraudster only accepts payment through personal checks, money order, wire transfer, and Western Union money trade transfer. It is bluntly stipulated in his auction page. Okay. Technical terms. So first, we have website. It is a portfolio of a person, organization, entity, company, which is posted on the internet for accessibility worldwide. So, uh, website ng PNP, andun nakalagay kung sino-sino ang mga in-charge. 
sa iba't ibang divisions or units or groups sa PNP. Uh, andun yung mga news ng PNP. Andun yung mga latest news. Uh, may access din sa e-blotter. Ayun, sample lang. And then, the Internet Protocol Address or IP Address is the anchor of the investigation of all crimes committed via the Internet because cybercrime is not limited to one place. Katulad natin, di ba? We are conducting this lecture and we are in different places. And the place where you are uh, the place where you are present has uh, a specific IP address. The identification of the IP address leads to the identity of the internet service provider used to access the internet and eventually the subscriber of the account where the internet activity was performed. The IP address was as given by the ISP depends on the type of internet account a subscriber maintains whether it is a dynamic IP or static IP. If static, sabihin, hindi gumagalaw, nasa isang lugar lang. Subscriber information, name, billing address, installation address, type of internet account, usage, and costs, if applicable. And then if dynamic naman, log reports indicating telephone number used to make dial-up access. Okay. So, the address of the subscriber, pag sinabing subscriber, kayo yon yung gumagamit ng internet. As given by the ISP or phone company should be analyzed to determine whether it is a billing address or an installation address. For the purposes of a search warrant application, the installation address is the more important matter to consider. The purpose of a search warrant application or implementation in a cybercrime investigation, as with any other offense is to confiscate and seize the instruments or implements, tools used in the commission of the offense. Since the crime was committed with the aid of a computer, the same and its peripherals are the instruments used in its commission. Okay, top 10 security tips for computer users. Never send an email that you wouldn't let your wife or boss to read. <laughs> Turn off your computer when you are not using it is only the only sure way to keep the hackers out. And then use a password to log on to your computer. Uh, parang matik naman to, di ba? Hanggat maaari, lagyan mo ng, ng password yung computer mo. Pati cellphone mo nga, di ba? Most operating system or OS let you set a password and to change it regularly. Don't accept cookies. If you have to, delete them when you are finished surfing. Use the latest versions and software patches for your email and your browser. New security loopholes are constantly being discovered. Then, keep your antivirus up to date. Hackers never rest. Every email attachment con con can contain a virus. So, scan it before you open it. I think Google uh, Gmail has this feature na bago mo i-download ang isang file sent to you through an email, iti-check nyo muna. Iti-check nyo muna for viruses. Then kapag okay na, pwede i-download nyo na. And then watch your laptop at the airport. Be especially careful at x-ray security machines, which is where most laptop theft occur. Don't use the same password over and over. Make new variations. So kung madami kang account, may Facebook ka, may Instagram ka, may Gmail ka, may TikTok ka, YouTube, kailangan iba-iba ang mga, ang password mo. Kasi, kung pare-para sa password mo, pag nalaman niya ng hacker, lahat na ng accounts mo, magkaka-access na siya. Then, use a paper shredder. Don't just throw out unsolicited credit card information. Shred them. Katulad ng mga uh, nagiging incidents. Dahil may ano to? Sa Shopee, tsaka sa Lazada, di ba? Nakalagay doon yung contact information mo, doon yung address mo, pangalan mo, uh, number mo. At uh, ano to? Yung mga riders, hindi ko naman nilalahat, pero yung may may ganitong incident kasi, yung riders na parang uh, kinukuha na lang yung personal information mo tapos 
uh, lolokohin ka kasi gagamit sila ng ibang contact number. Ayun, gawin sila ng ibang crime. And then, kaya mahalaga na dapat ishred or sunugin yung, ano ba yun? yung dinidikit sa parcel ninyo na andun yung information. Never social security number online or offline. This information in the wrong hand is a license to steal. 